there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, we are recording at this time. Is that correct? Okay. Um, tonight is Tuesday, um, March 5th, 2022, and this is the meeting of the Templeton Community Service District Board of Directors meeting. Um, with that, I'll ask that our board secretary do a roll call. Director is English. Here. Cardonish. Here. Jardini. We don't have microphones or anything anymore. The microphone is built into the ceiling. Yeah, so tonight is the first night in two years that the board is now doing a face to face meeting back in the boardroom. Um, we do have uh, yes. Director uh, Fardanish is on the phone via Zoom, as is the public. Um, we, do, uh, we do have the ability to have a Zoom call with the board of director uh, because our resolution is still in effect. And um, so that is why we are, we've got that flexibility. So we'll talk a little later this evening about going forward and what, how the board meetings will be conducted. Um, with that, um, we do have uh, our order of business. Um, there is just one item on our agenda uh, for the board's consideration in terms of new business. So uh, with that, we'll move to special reports. And this evening we have Commander Manuele from the Sheriff's Department here um, in person in the boardroom to give us an update. So welcome. Podium. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'll have to look at a monitor. Um, Happy to be here. Good evening, Michael Manuelli, Commander of Sheriff's North Station. I have your report for February 2022. The station received 1,515 calls for service. Compared to last year, we had 1,422. That's an increase of 7%. Am I sounding okay? Hearing no objections. Uh, Templeton accounted for 332 compared to last year. There were 286, a 16% increase in calls for service. San Miguel, for comparison, had 152 calls for service compared to last year, 158, a drop of about 4%. From those calls for service, the station generated 242 reports. Last year, it was 186, so that's a 30% increase this year. Templeton accounted for 64 reports compared to last year, 42 reports, an increase of about 52%. And then San Miguel accounted for 28 reports compared to last year, 27, hardly a change at all. Breaking those calls for service down into different categories, assault and battery. We had four calls for service generating three reports. We had a family disturbance that turned physical, uh, we also had initial call of a woman screaming for help. It turned out to be a violation of a court order. And then a subject was brandishing a knife at one of our local markets. Disturbance calls, there were 13 generating four reports. Two of the four reports were mental health related. We had a patient that was brought into the hospital for a mental health hold who turned assaultive against hospital staff. We had three calls for service for burglary. One of those generated a report. We had a uh, burglary at a cannabis grow in our local area. There were zero other thefts. We had five vandalism reports generating, we had five calls generating five reports. We had vandalism defense, mailbox, RV trailer windows, vehicle, and then another fence. There were three trespassing calls for service generating one report. A soon to be ex employee entered the business and was creating disturbance. We had one phone scam. It was a puppy phone scam via social media trying to get information from the people. 14 suspicious circumstance calls generating two reports. Um, a vehicle was seen at a residence where the owner had recently passed away. Obviously, we won't want to get over and check that. We also um, had a subject who was passed out in a vehicle and the vehicle was fairly smashed. So with his own vehicle, turned out that person had an arrest warrant and ended up going to jail. And that is my report for this February. 
and I'm available for your questions, comments, concerns. So question that I have is, I think the last week or the week before, there was a lot going on at the school. Can you speak to that in terms of the lockdown that took place at Templeton? I can tell you that we did respond to a threats incident at the school and uh, we deployed large resources. It occurred two consecutive days. I'm trying to remember if it was two consecutive days or every other day. I think it was two consecutive days we responded out there and assessed the situation. And, and was the threat legit? I mean, was the person who was making that threat, were they arrested or um, can you speak to that? No, I cannot at this time. Okay. Um, so all threats are taken as real unless we have something to mitigate or say that it was not. Um, it's, it's difficult to handle these situations with what we had. It was very little information, uh, but we took it seriously and we, the school determined that their protocol required the students to be locked down in place. So that was the school's call. I called in our explosive detection dog. I had school resource officer respond to the location, other deputies respond, we teamed up with school personnel and we uh, did a security safety check of the school. Yeah, well, my husband saw the response. Um, so thank you um, for taking it seriously. It was quite large. Yeah. And un unfortunately, this day and age, you have to respond like that all the yeah. time. Now, I'd rather respond like that and be wrong and not respond and have it be wrong. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Questions. Um, with that, uh, members of the board, uh, questions for Commander Manwelly? Yes, Director English. You mentioned the burglary at the cannabis operation, and there are a couple in our area. Are they, do they generate some uh, illegal activity or, or? Not very often. Not very often, okay. Not very often at all. This one was, someone saw an opportunity and got in there and got some, uh, some marijuana, cannabis, and then uh, I think they also tried it a second night, but they had removed what product was left there and they didn't get it. So we did not have good suspect information. And I, you may have responded, there was an incident out off of Almond. It looked like a fire or a vehicle fire. It was a lot of black smoke out there. So it was probably a question. Was that, when was that? On Sunday. Sunday. That was Sunday. That was a structure fire out on, off of the Omar, South of Omar. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have any information on that one. Just curious. I was in the area, so that was it. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you being here. My pleasure. Um, see Director you. Fardonish, do you have any questions for Commander Manwelly? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I'm gonna open it up to members of the public. I believe we have a few members of the public. Uh, okay. If any members of the public have a question for Commander mm -hmm. Manwelly, please unmute your phone and introduce yourself for the record. Okay, hearing and seeing none, um, thank you very much uh, for coming this evening. We certainly appreciate your attendance here and uh, for also keeping our community safe. I appreciate so. that. Hopefully I'll see you next one. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, I can't read because people are up there. Maybe when we start our meetings, if there's no um, one Joe Wachi is one and... Um, say who they are. The they, so so um, you speak, we, we cannot... Uh, require a member of the public to identify themselves, but it's up there. Well, it's up there because yeah. it's through Zoom. It's through Zoom, but, but right, but but I mean, you, you could you could ask that they identify themselves, um, or we could tell you who's okay. That's fine. Whose names are up here, but you can't require that they identify themselves. Well, that's what I'm asking. Okay. The ones that are the ones that are listed. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, mean, so. Um, the, the first one, the, I think the bottom name is the same as in the big box, Ron's RGS yeah. Mini. And I, I know and uh, it's uh, Joe that, that's uh, okay. Ron, Ron Crawl, I believe, and Joe Waji is the other. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So with that, we'll move to the portion of our meeting, which is open for public comments. And this is the period of time in which the uh, members of the public may address the board on any item of interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board that's not on tonight's agenda. 
So in compliance with the Brown Act, the board cannot discuss or act on items not on the agenda. However, board members or the district staff may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed by the public. Additionally, on their own initiative or in response to questions posed by the public, a board or staff member may ask questions for clarification. Further, the board may request staff to report back to the body at a subsequent meeting concerning any matter or to take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. So with that, I'll open it up to members of the public. If you would like to address the board at this time, please unmute your phone and introduce yourself for the record. Okay, hearing and seeing none, uh, we'll move to the consent agenda. Um, this evening, we have three items on the consent agenda. The first item is the minutes. And this is for the board to consider adoption of the regular meeting minutes of March 1st, 2022. We have the treasurer's report for January, 2022 and the Santa Lucia Riparian Agency Agreement. And this is to consider approving the agreement um, for the school to uh, make connection to the district water. Would any board member like to pull an item or have a question or comments on the consent agenda items? Yes, uh, Director I a, English. I have a quick question. I don't want wish to pull the item. It's in regard to the riparian uh, agreement. My, my understanding is that the riparian agreement transfers the riparian agreement uh, agreement or the rights to that water to the district. However, uh, at least for the use that they use, is it, but they, it, it appears that they are, uh, that the riparian survey shows more waters available than what they're using. That's not an excess supply to the district because it can only be used at that site. Yes, the riparian agreement is partial specific, and the, the uh, you're correct in that uh, when the parties enter into a riparian agency agreement, the the property owner is essentially giving the district the right to to pump on that property owner's behalf, but only to serve that property. In this case, they did determine that there was more water available than the, than we anticipate Santa Lucia School using, but there's some advantages in the in recording that in the agreement in, in that. Um, the riparian agency agreement survives the, the or uh, survives longer than the current use and would allow the property owner then to expand use at some point down the road, although it, it would still be subject to uh, connection fees if they were to expand their use beyond what is anticipated. And yeah, that was my next question. If they take more, then they would have to pay an additional fee for whatever the amount of water up uh, unit the water would uh, cost them. So we, they couldn't just use that additional water. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, our, our review is typically limited to when the, there's a project proposed on the site. Uh, um, otherwise they're billed for what they use as a part of the monthly billing. But when the, if they were to um, propose, let's say five years from now, propose to put a new, another classroom in or something of that nature, we would review their water use to date, determine how much additional use the classroom would generate and determine if if, it, if that requires an additional connection fee to be paid. That was my only question. I think this is a win-win and I intend to vote for it, so. Okay. Um, any questions or comments, uh, Director Fardonish? No. Okay. Um, so do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, items A, B, and C? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second that motion. So we have a motion made by Director Peterson and uh, seconded by Director Logan. Can we have a roll call, please? Directors Peterson? Aye. Logan? Aye. English? <coughs> Aye. Cardonish? <coughs> Aye. And Jardini? And Director Jardini is absent. Okay, so that motion passes 4-0 with uh, one uh, absent vote. Um, Moving on to our new business items. Um, we have resolution number 032022, purchasing policy. Um, you know what, I'm gonna back up because I did not allow the public to make any comments on the consent agenda. 
Um, so I'm bad there. Um, so I want to just open it up if any members of the public have a comment on the consent agenda before I move on. Even though we did vote on that item, I still want to make that available. So if any members of the public have questions on any of the three consent agenda items, um, please unmute your phone and introduce yourself. Okay, I'm hearing and seeing none, uh, then we'll move on to resolution uh, 032022. Um, purchasing policy. And um, this is for the board to consider adopting the resolution 032022, approving the update to the purchasing policy for the district. And I believe this afternoon um, there was an updated version of that policy distributed to all board members uh, with some um, corrections to some typos. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Natalie Clock, um, our finance officer, to uh, present this item. So good evening. Um, before the board tonight is a recommendation to approve an update to the district's purchasing policy, which has been a goal of the district for some years. The district has been following many of these practices for quite some time, and the proposed policy is based on the CSDA model, the Pomo and Cambria CSD policies in general. <clears throat> Senate Bill 1383 addresses mandatory organic waste disposal reduction in an effort to reduce emissions of short-lived climate pollutants. One aspect of SB 1383 is the purchasing of recycled paper products and reporting requirements and is included in the updated policy. And so we have the policy, um, uh, yeah, we can go ahead and put it up. Um, we can go through the policy as in much detail as the board would like. Um, and we were going to start with um, the tables on page six. It's right here. And so um, these tables are based off of um, budgeted line items um, that would have already been approved in the budget. So this first section, um, A, is for materials, supplies, and equipment. Um, and then it lists the dollar amount. So zero to 5,000, there would be no purchase order required. Um, we have 5,000 to 10,000, um, a written quote, minimum of three and a purchase order or contract required. Um, the next one's actually the same requirements, 10,000 to 24,999. And then $25,000 plus, we would prepare a notice of inviting proposals for material supplies and equipment. And then a board um, approval required for contract or RFP if amount is over $50,000. So does the board have any yeah. questions on uh, the purchasing policy for material supplies and equipment. Why did you delineate uh, the five, 10,000 keeping the same requirements for both? Just just curious, because you have five, yeah, 10,000 and it could have been, it could have been com yeah, combined. <laughs> so we can make changes to this. You know, we can change dollar amounts that the board, you know, desires or, or whatnot. So I can update this to, uh, one or we could change the amount of you know quotes if if we want to do five to ten thousand with two quotes or ten to twenty four ninety nine with three quotes. So how is this currently written? I mean, do we have this already identified in a purchasing policy, or is this a brand new policy? Our policy that we have is is pretty old. But do we I have this kind of grid that uh, with this authorization level? I don't. It's not formatted in this way. Okay. okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, it was pretty much just like paragraphs. So the formatting is 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 new uh, and was inherited from uh, other agencies, and so um, we attempted to put in what uh, sort of fit the format to our current, our, our current policy and practice but obviously you may choose to make adjustments before you consider adopting it and if this is if there's you know we could eliminate 
we can make that just three boxes instead of four and just the, the 5,000 to $25,000 range would, would apply just for clarity. Yeah. I, I, will, I will tell you, I think that the, um, one of the reasons we've adjusted this a little bit, well, especially on the, the third line item is right now <laughs> the board, if let's say you approve the purchase of a, of a pickup truck in the utilities division. Um, we get quotations and proceed with the purchase and that is generally not reviewed by the board. So that's why we adjusted that bottom line price to $50,000 because mm -hmm. we thought the board was, has been generally comfortable with that approach. But at some point when the, uh, the equipment purchasing price reaches a certain threshold, you may want to be more engaged. So that was an adjustment that we made to, this, to the model policy uh, because it reflects our historic practice. Yeah, but I, I agree with uh, Director English. It doesn't make sense to have you know the same verbiage um, for five to ten thousand dollars as ten to twenty four thousand um, dollars. You know, there's really no difference. Yeah, that'd be a, a really so easy fix. That you probably if, just blend that together. Yeah, it's not even. A, it's really not. A, it's just for clarity. It would make no policy changes at all if you asked us to do that. Right. Yeah. Right. I would agree yeah. too. So. Director, um, my, my other question on this was, what is our current uh, board threshold for, re I think it's, it was 25 now, correct? So we're, we're making the decision to bump it to 50. I think or is there no established? You know, I, I apologize. When the item has been in the budget, we haven't gone back to the board. If the if the item was not budgeted, we brought the, that item back to you as a budget amendment. I'm comfortable with that amount. I just want to know if there was a change. And I thought during COVID we did increase it to fifty. During during yeah, for you, the board took a yeah the, the board took action uh, two years ago and um, uh, declared that during the COVID emergency, uh, items up to fifty thousand um, dollars didn't need to go before the board, even if they were not budgeted, yeah. and up to a hundred thousand if the board president concurred. We really haven't done anything like that during yeah. this during this period of time, but um, there's a separate. Uh, so th again, this this table that you're looking at here really only applies to the specifics were included in the approved budget. Mm -hmm. Correct. Director Fardonish had had his hand up. Okay, yes. Director Fardonish, you have a question. Oh uh, yes, uh, it was the same question that you guys addressed, so I'm okay. However, let me just qu quickly ask, as far as the um, the visual that I'm seeing, I cannot see you guys. I only see uh, Natalie's. Uh, presentation. So is that the way it's supposed to be? And and we can only see the presentation as well. We okay. can't see you. So, uh, so, so there, there is an option where you can <clears throat> you just share your screen so, or she can it's up there. Yeah, we do have a couple of options. In order to get the material to be as large as possible for both. Uh, so let me, let me just back up for a second. Um, we have to push out to the public the same information that is viewed on this screen, um, the, out, the output. So our choices are, in order to make it lar as, as large as possible, then you lose the, 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 um, the Zoom information. We're, we're, by, we're kind of bypassing the Zoom. The other a choice to and do what we had. And that's what we had thought the board would want for presentations. We would go back to the camera when the presentation concluded or during a board discussion, we can go back just like we are right now. We could have cycled back to the board uh, during a, during a discussion and cycle back to the image. The other choice is to actually push the presentation through Zoom, but then you're limited to about 60% of the screen. Yeah. Through the share screen, kind of, it would, look, it would look like the share screens that you're, you've seen over the past couple of years. Which I think would make it difficult for those on Zoom to be able to see it visually. Um, so I think we just need to be able to toggle back and forth between members of the public and the presentation. The so do the presentation and then when we have the question and answer session um, to then go back to the Zoom where people are visible. Um, because we see the same thing you do, Naveed, okay. uh, here in the boardroom. So okay. when the presentation is up, that's all we see on the screen. Uh, and that's probably all you're seeing as well on your computer screen. So I think we just have to toggle back and forth in between. Yeah, okay. and, and actually Gary yeah, can toggle, like let's say for, for example, we're having this discussion uh, with the presentation could be up and if the board wants to stop and talk about it, we can toggle back to that image. Yeah. And then um, 
and then anyone in the public can see that we're discussing it and then you can go back to the to the presentation it's just a little bit um it's not difficult but it probably is going to depend on 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 how long the discussion is going to be yeah. and and it's all manually kind of done and just so for those uh, members of the public who are joining us this evening this is the first time that the board has come back into the boardroom in two years um and Coming back into the boardroom, we are using new technology, um, which hopefully makes it easier for people to participate. Um, but um, also it's a little challenging and it's a little new, so we are learning as we go. Um, so um, please bear with us. Um, so any other comments on the um, method of procurement for the material supplies and equipment from board members before I open it up to the public? I have a question on the above. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Natalie. I know this has been a pain in her side for as long as I can remember. And a couple of us board members have been <laughs> asking about it periodically. So thank you, Natalie, for finally getting this done and to any staff. Uh, I, I have a question on page six that we're on, um, 2.4C. I think um, the managers should report back to the board sooner than 30 days. We meet twice a month and it's, you have to uh, bring something back to the board. I think 30 days is a bit, bit long. At the next available board meeting, or thirty days, because sometimes we yeah, cancel a meeting. That's so true. At the, at yeah, the, I, I would yeah, I, at the next the next available board, available board meeting or thirty days, whichever I guess could be. Um, can, can it say? Can, can we work on that? Just want to make sure something like place on the next agenda, or because it really is scheduled. Because if, like, for example, if something had occurred on Friday of last week. That we had to make an, uh, uh, an urgent unbudgeted expenditure, it, would, it wouldn't have been able to make this board meeting because that packet would have already been posted, that agenda had already been posted, even though this is the next board meeting. So I think your intent is, uh, you know, get, get this item on the next agenda. Board agenda. The next board agenda, provided it has already posted. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to do some wordsmithing, but uh, I think we can come up with something. Well, this right. says report too. It doesn't say anything about <clears throat> bring it to the board for approval. Oh, that's true. And so, and, and, and let me, well, let me go one more thing. I mean, I think you are very good about letting us know what's going on and you probably would normally do it um, with an email. Yeah. Um, but that, that's my point. I think to have it in writing, though, <clears throat> we should say something like at the first available board meeting or something to that effect. Right. Yeah. Or maybe something like, uh, like go ahead and wordsmith it and then yeah. we can take a look at it later yeah um because yeah i i hear what um general manager brills is concerned with yeah. you know I do too. yeah so, it, this is request the appropriate budget amendment so that that means you you'd have a document to to, to review and approve and be an, act, an action item on the on at that board meeting but yeah but we can come up with uh i i i think i understand the intent you're saying hey uh as soon as possible basically. yeah yeah Exactly. Okay. Um, any other comments? Um, Director Fardanish, do you have any additional comments on this page? No. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll move to page seven under professional services. And again, this is for budgeted items. So for zero to $24,999, we would solicit proposals from a qualified consultant or professional by whatever method the purchasing agent deems appropriate under the circumstances. And then for over 25,000, would prepare a request for qualification and or request RFP for board approval, um, board approval of contract required if amount is over $50,000. So does the board have any questions on professional services or comments? Director Fardanish, um, since we can't see you, I'm gonna defer to you. Do you have any questions or comments on this? No, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, uh, okay. So I, any other I, questions I, or I comments? Did, I did wanna talk a little bit more about the professional services as we get into chapter four. I think you're gonna go through this 
a little bit and yeah. I wanted to just walk through. I'm not the 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 amounts there and the table is fine with me. I don't have any concerns about that. Okay. We're good? Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to open it up um, unless members of the public would like to comment at this time on the items uh, that we're just addressing uh, a which is the material supplies uh, and equipment uh, or the professional services. Uh, and if you do unmute your phone and introduce yourself. Okay, hearing and seeing none, then we'll move on to public works. So see, yes, public works. Um, so this is set by the Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act. What page um, you on? This is page seven. 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 And this is uh, zero to 60,000 um, may be performed by TCSD employees by force account uh, or by negotiated contract or by purchase order. From 60,001 to 200,000 contract by informal procedures as set forth in the Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act. And then over 200,000, um, the same contract by formal procedures or by formal procedures as set forth in the Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act. Okay. Questions on, on that? Uh, Director Fontanish, yeah. any questions or comments? Yes, I do have a question. Is the 60,000 limit that says maybe maybe performed by TCSD employees, is that the maximum that we could do? Uh, yeah, if the work is a public a public works project. So okay. uh, these, these amounts are, are, are already adopted by the district when we adopted the updated um, Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act. So they reflect the ordinance. I, I believe it was uh, only about 18 months ago that the, the, the board adopted. And those, those, those uh, are set by state law. They can be revised. And if they're revised, the district can, can uh, alter its ordinance, in which case this, those amounts will be reflected here as well. Actually, the, it, oh, real quick. I mean, don't they, I mean, do they change? I mean, especially with the costs going up so much, you obviously cannot do as much with $60,000. So do they change at all with the state or has it changed? I'm not. Uh, I'm not certain how frequently the, the figures might be revised. Right. Are you more familiar with it? I, I am. Uh, not very often. They have changed on a few occasions over the last 15 years or so, two or three times. Uh, and, and so those. One of my recommendations is that these limits be consistent with uh, the the current public contract code, uh, as stated in st uh, state law. So those do fluctuate. Just two years ago, it was 175,000 on an informal project. So I know that's changed recently. So, you know, in lieu of coming back, uh, I would say I put an asterisk on those figures and then state that uh, those, those are current amounts as stated in the public contract code uh, under the Uniform Cost Accounting Act and that, um, they will be revised in accordance with current state law. So I, I, that, that way we don't have to keep coming back to our board whenever they change. And you can update it periodically, but. Yeah, I, I think we can make that adjustment. The idea here was to tie these figures all together. So we can put a, a, essentially a footnote that says, this, these are figures are current as of such and such date, uh, but it'll be whatever, this, whatever state law permits. That would that would take into account a, a periodic adjustment to those um, those figures. Okay. If that's what the board would like. Yes, I think that's a ah. good uh, recommendation. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any <coughs> other comments from uh, board members on this section? Um, I have a, just a quick question. Sure. How often has the district gone to the state or the county to purchase anything for us? I mean, you have up here on one and two that we may request the state or the county. Oh, so so actually, you know, you don't have to go to them. These, these, these purchase, sometimes the purchasing um, uh, public bids are published and known. You don't have to request them. They're, they're published. And uh, the vendors know that they're the award. You know, they, they receive the, the, the low bid for the year. 
and it's a published cost. Um, so you don't have to ask, you don't necessarily have to request the state or the county to actually bid that on your behalf. Um, the, sometimes the, these items can be, uh, you know, unknown. Like they, they win a state bid and they, they extend the offer. Uh, for example, we, let me give you, give you a fairly recent and, and high dollar example, the type three fire engine that we got. We purchased it off the state bid price without having to do our own um, um, quotations for that issue. Okay. Sometimes you can actually get it cheaper than what the state bid says, but it, it is a, a good option for not having to go out to bid yourself because it's competitively drawn. Okay. So sometimes you can piggyback on like a county bid or others. So I think that was, if somebody else goes out and wants to buy exactly what you do and they did all the work, and they got the bids, then we could piggyback off of that. So I was just curious. How... Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, I'm going to open up for members of the public. Do members of the public that like to comment on uh, the public work session section of the policy? And if so, unmute your phone and introduce yourself. <clears throat> okay, hearing and seeing none, we'll move forward then to the uh, next item. So uh, I guess depending on how much detail the, the board would like to go through under each of these chapters, um, chapter three just outlines um, the purchase of the materials, supplies, and equipment under um, budgeted line items. Um, did the board have any questions on that or, or um, I guess what amount of discussion do you wanna go through? Well, I'm just looking one. Um, um, the one thing I will note that on page eight, this is one where we changed, uh, updated one of the items. It had said two vendors under number two, and now it just says three vendors to match the three in the parentheses. Okay, and then you should have under number one, you should have a dollar sign in front, 5,000. Yes. Okay. And then. I think if we, did we, we agreed that on page six um, under the grid, we were going to merge um, the two, the five to 24,000. So then we probably should make some adjustments here as well, I would think. <clears throat> Which we don't have to do right oh, now. Uh, um, under 3.2. I don't see it. Um, Let's see, because uh, 10,000, because we're saying that the way, um, on the grid, we're saying that these are reading the same, the five to 10,000 and the 10 to 25. So I would think that that would have an impact here. This just lists it's 10 to 25 capital purchases, 10 to 25, and then it just goes to greater than, 25. It didn't, doesn't have that middle. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't think so. Uh, well, well I'm, okay, so I think the difference is, if I'm, unless I'm, uh, I'm sorry for, for that's okay. It's kind of late. The, the issue under, uh, under 3.2 A2 has a verbal, a verbal quotes. Um, or in written sense. Yeah, yeah. That's so maybe the that's the difference. That's, difference. So that's why it doesn't match the word. So that doesn't match then. So this is verbal instead of written. So there is a difference then. Okay. <clears throat> so going back to page six on the grid versus the verbiage that's written on page eight, the difference is verbal. So but they both got different dollar amounts. Yeah. yeah. Well, because it's saying between 5,000 5, and 10,000, 10, it's a verbal yeah, it should be quote. Verbal. And then the difference is between 10 and 24,000, it is a written quote. So that's consistent with what's on page eight, the verbal on page eight. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so then that makes sense to keep both. Of yeah, them. keep them separated. Yeah, keep it. So we're, we're not going to merge those two then. The verbal quote for three, but then on the written quote, do you want three as well? No, so on the grid? Yeah, because on the grid, it says written quote three. 
So, on the so we're going to change this to verbal, yeah, just verbal, but three. Yeah. And then down here, keep that written. But this says written two. So do we want to change this oh, to change it to the three? To three. Okay. then we're consistent. Okay. 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 So, so Naveev, I can't see you. Are you good with those changes then? Are you following along? Yes, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. So then we can look at, this is talks about purchase order preparation, uh, chapter four, which was the procurement of professional services. I think that we wanted to mm -hmm. address Dr. English. Yeah, actually uh, a couple of things on that. One is that, that there seems to be an inconsistency between the chart again on page seven and what was written on page 13. So under 4.5, it says professional services with an estimated cost $25,000 or more. And then bullet number A, bullet A says the board of directors shall approve the request for proposals the award of professional services greater than $25,000, but there's a note in the box under procurement says board approval of contracts required if the amount is over $50,000. So, and that was, I think, one of the items that we updated. Scroll down. And what yeah, was page. sent out yeah, this afternoon? Right here. We yeah, added four this. Five. So, so the, the intent here is that if we believe the uh, professional service we're seeking is going to cost more than $25,000. An RFP would be generated and would come to the board of directors as a, as a solicitation, an RFP, not, not the actual bids, sent out uh, then to proposers. Uh, um, if the proposals or the recommended proposal is for more than $50,000, it would need to come back to the board for approval. If it's between 25 and 50, it would not. It would not need to. That doesn't mean it couldn't. Uh, typically, it, I think it probably depends on the kinds of services we're seeking. But um, uh, we, we've had, you know, committee members assist in evaluating proposals through the com committee action. Um, but I think this is an area where we want to make sure that we're uh, meeting the, the board's desire, the board's uh, needs. We wanted um, the sample we got did request that services that were going to cost more than 25000 the board would approve the, the RFP before it is sent out. Uh, that way we're not soliciting proposals for something that you're not, you don't want to see move forward or maybe move forward at that time, uh, even though it would have been budgeted. It would have been budgeted. And then it would come back to the board with certainty if, it, if the award was more than $50,000, but not necessarily if it's between twenty five and fifty. I'm not so concerned about seeing uh, an RFP before it goes out. I mean, trust staff that one, it's a budgeted item and they're going to, if it's budgeted and they need to get professional services solicitations that they will pull that together. And then awarding the contract is something certainly I think that the board would, would want to see after it's been uh, competitively solicited. But... <clears throat> As far as if your intention is for us to approve that solicitation before it goes out, under I, I don't. I, I agree. I, I don't think much. there's a need for me to see an RFP <clears throat> because I'm not going to be. I'm not the the operational person who needs to provide that detail in the RFP before or RFI. I just want to know it's gone out. I don't. Really, I mean, that's going to add time to the Yeah, I'm working yeah, it, it, it will. It, 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 it would add uh, time, you know, but potentially a delay of a couple weeks by the time, you know, one's prepared and then makes the next agenda. Um, I don't think we were overly concerned about whether or not you, uh, you know, that we thought there'd be material changes to the board would watch the RFP, but rather that 
we have run into the circumstance when we have issued RFPs and then you later didn't a, a, award a contract because. So you want really approval to move forward with the RFP we, we process, not necessarily approval of the RFP itself. You want you want authorization to say the board is behind you and going out yeah, for the request yeah, for proposal. We don't want to. What we don't want to do is do something that you're not intending yeah. on doing at the time because uh, getting uh, uh, going through the RFP process is, is time consuming. Yeah. It, it takes some time to generate yeah. one, and then you're you're soliciting from various vendors or consultants or whatever. We don't want it that late to, to do that and, and, and inconvenience those vendors or whatever to give us proposals, then bring it back to you, and, and then also let the board say, "Well, we don't want to do that right now, anyways." Uh, but so we think it may be just like a consent agenda item that. Well, it, I think it's got to read a little differently because the board is not actually approving the request for proposal. The board is approving the, uh, the or is giving authorization to initiate that RFP. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's in your defense, we actually had this happen. So right, right. It, it was on this boardroom. Yes. So we actually went out, you got proposals to do this. It was a budgeted item. Then it came back before the board it was a budgeted item and we denied the contract yeah. because we didn't want to move forward with the contract. Sometimes that happens. I, I mean, yeah. We may get cold feet about something even though it's budgeted and later on. So I think you're, you're trying to find some comfort level that if it's budgeted, it, it, that we give you direction to go out and get prices and go forward and that you'll actually be able to pull the trigger because it takes time for a consultant to pull together a package, yeah. put together, you know, a proposal and you, you know, have create some bad will with those folks when you don't do anything. I'm guessing that's kind of the circumstance. Yeah, I think that that's the, the idea behind it. Although I can, uh, I can understand that, you know, may, maybe what you're saying is maybe it's something that's more simple. It's an authorization to proceed with the, yeah. with the Process. work or something and that, that wouldn't create quite the delay. You know, we wouldn't have to wait until the RFP has already uh, been um, put together, but in fact, when you did approve the budget, I mean, there's a, maybe there's another way to go about it. When you approve the budget, um, you're you're giving the indication that you want to proceed with that work. You know, the board could, if you get cold feet or you want to change directions, you could say, "Please bring back a budget amendment concerning this item." I'm I want to talk about this more before we proceed. Six months later or something, that might be another approach. But it uh, you may not always be aware of what we might be working on, uh, you know, at, at, at any given time. Um, and, and, and another, another example was, you know, we did an RFP and got quotations for the for a compensation study a few years ago. We brought that item back and the board didn't want to proceed with it again. Yeah. It was, it was another example. I think we're trying to be too detailed here. I mean, to me, if it's in the budget, you have the authority to do whatever you want to do. If we change our mind later, that's on us. So I, I mean, we're double. You, you want to streamline this essentially? Yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, again, if it's in the budget, you don't need our authority to do anything. And we can come back and disapprove it later and say we made a well, mistake on the budget. Well, circumstances change. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think you're, we're just going to delay things by coming to us again. So, yeah. so we're going to strike a request for proposal and just say the board of directors shall approve the award of professional service contracts if the contract is greater than 50000 What happened to Mike's? I don't know what happened. It got a little darker all of a sudden, but it all... Yeah, the screen changed. Oh, the screen changed from bright white to the... Okay, for the to the Zoom screen, that's what happened. Um, Director Ferdonis, do you have any comments or do you agree with uh, the discussion? Uh, yes, uh, I like to try to streamline it. Uh, and, and I guess I'm just going back to those examples. I think the reason we may have changed our mind was because I think things had, the prices had changed. It was above the amount that was in the budget. So I think there was some extraneous circumstances there. But overall, though, I would like to try to make sure that uh, things are streamlined for our general managers to get his job done as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, any members of the public, um, do you have any comments uh, that you would like to make uh, regarding the um, public works uh, and the professional services estimates that we were discussing? 
And if so, please unmute your phone and introduce yourself. Okay, hearing and seeing none, uh, we'll move on then. Um, so I, I did, I did uh, on, that, on that, on that, on that particular uh, topic number four, chapter four, uh, one of the things I was concerned about was that, um, one, that we actually go out for a proposal. One of the things that the board has kind of been uh, frustrated about in the past is that we would award a, a bid without going out uh, for soliciting for proposals. So I think, thank you for putting this in place. This is good. But I have been dinged in my career two or three times by the Association of uh, Professional Engineers or something. There's some organization, professional association that calls you on the carpet if you don't uh, award based on qualifications, qualifications based awarding. And I don't see really any language where we are evaluating the proposals based on qualifications and awarding based on qualifications. Price is a factor within the evaluation of proposals, but I want to make sure we're following that protocol. I've had a couple of nasty grams over the years for not following that. So, um, would you like us to um, take a stab at uh, including a, a, a portion of policy in here that the, uh, the, the proposal should be evaluated based on qualifications? Yes, I, I actually I think it's it's actually there. You have, yeah, you have four point three, and that you just need to uh, you know shall be awarded based on demonstrated competence. Uh, qualifications for the type of services to be performed at a fair and reasonable price to TCSD. So I, I, I think it's there. It's just following that practice. I don't know that you could change that anymore. Yeah, I think it's fine the way it's written. I think it's hitting upon that. Okay, so if I just want to uh, confirm a couple things, and if we're going to alter the um, this policy is now going to reference the board. This the, the contract comes back to the board if it's over fifty thousand dollars. That doesn't mean that it couldn't come back in a smaller amount. Uh, again, this but this is this this becomes a requirement. And then what I've done, and if you don't want to see uh, the RFPs or approve the RFPs before they go out, I'm going to on page seven in the table where it says twenty five thousand dollars before it'll 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 just read prepare request request for qualifications and or request for proposals and for board approval will be stricken. And then it'll say board approval of contract required if it matters over 50,000 to be consistent with the new 4.5. Yep. Does that work? Yep. Okay. Now, do we need to change anything on six under the materials and supplies? Mm -hmm. um, or RFP, this or RFP. Where are you? Uh, no, it says you're it's, in the table. Yeah. No, um, well, it does. It says board, of, uh, board of approved required for contract or RFP, and it's just strict um, strike RFP. Strike RFP. Is this, uh, that's on center, uh, on chapter six, three. Yeah. So it was on page six, but chapter three or section three is the, is the really the more detailed purpose. Yeah. You know, we ran into a little trouble because the, the tables were really handy. But then, then we the, we were making changes that probably didn't uh, capture them all the way through. So let's. Uh, That's fine. Well, I think you've got the general yeah. intent uh, is that the RFP um, process. That's you own that. Um, the board will approve the professional services contract. Um, if it's over fifty thousand. If it's over fifty thousand. Yeah, and again, there'll be many times, I think, I don't want to say many, but there are other, other times when you're, let's say, we, you might recall we did a, um, a proposal for uh, a strategic planning consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that work was less than $50,000, but it didn't, it, that, that would have still come back to the board because it was for you. It, yeah. you, you know, yeah. was, you, you were pretty tied into that process more so than maybe other work that we might be doing. Yeah, understood. Okay. Any additional uh, comments, uh, Director for Donish? Okay. Um, I it just brought up a point back on page three uh -huh. under the ethical conduct of purchasing. I'd like to change the wording on one A two. 
I mean, it kind of sounds like we're looking for the lowest possible cost, and that's really not, not the case. I'm sorry. Um, on page three, three under ethical conduct version A2. A2. Oh. So how would you like that to read? You know, I'm not sure, but I, I just don't like the fact that, to me, when I look at that, it says that we're looking for the lowest possible cost, and if that's not the case, and I'm not sure that was the reasoning behind this, but that's the way it sounds. So I, I think there's a difference between buying a, a, a product and buying a, a, a service, a professional service. And so, um, if we develop specifications for a product and the, the quotes that we receive meet those specifications, you may not have the ability to, to select a product that's not the least expensive. When you're making a, a selection of a professional service, like a, a architect or an engineer, cost is a factor, but you don't have to accept the lowest, the lowest price. I mean, but, I agree with that. Okay. I mean, I and, then, and then it's even more strict on when you're, when you're doing with like a public works project, where if the, unless the contractor is deemed unqualified, you have to accept the lowest well, then, price yeah, or pass on it. That's different, yeah. So, but I, I, um, I think um, this is reasonable and provides the best value. I mean, is that, do you want a, a statement that's broader? Like um, we can revise lowest possible cost to, and provides the best value for this type of purchase? Uh, yeah, I would prefer something like that versus what's there. Okay. Any comments, uh, Director Pardonish? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Uh, members of the public, uh, would you like to comment on this? And if so, unmute your phone and introduce yourself. And hearing and seeing none. We'll move on then. Okay, so, so, uh, oh. I'm sorry, I just wanted to point out on the same chapter uh, five, yes, um, five, two, A, B, and C, these dollar amounts are also listed in that table. We talked about adding a um, like a footnote yes. explaining that these amounts might adjust over time. We would apply the same footnote to this section so they're consistent. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any other comments, Director I don't know if there was, do we need to go over anything else for this section? Um, so are we all good on section five, uh, chapter five, uh, procurement of public works? Any comments from you, uh, Director Fardanish, on chapter five? No comments. Okay, members of the public, do you have any questions or comments on chapter five, uh, the section regarding procurement of public works? And if so, unmute your phone and introduce yourself for the record. Okay, hearing and seeing none, we'll move to chapter six, uh, procurement of recycled content paper. So for this section, there was actually three different options the district can choose from. Um, they were in your on your agenda item. Um, option one, which um, which the staff is recommending is in the um, uh, draft policy here is a comparable or more favorable pricing. And we've included this, excuse me for interrupting, mm -hmm. we've included this because it is a regulatory requirement. Right, for SB 1383. Yes. For, right. Okay. Right, so there's, yeah, a different a number of different, um, you know, every type of paper product you can think of, um, and then also different reporting requirements. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's option one, which we're recommending. There was option two, which was price preference. And then option three was no price preference. And just to give you some background, the option one, what that means is we must look for 
a recycled product that meets that meets our needs. However, we're not obligated to buy it if it costs more than the traditional uh, product. Um, option two, um, would, which is not included, but is in your staff report, would allow you to say, hey, we want to, we're willing to pay more for a recycled content product and you would insert a percentage like 20%. You're willing to pay up to 20% more to buy a paper product that has recycled content and therefore you wouldn't buy the cheapest uh, product available or the least expensive product available. And option three says, if it's available, that's what we're buying regardless of price. And I think staff was recommending option one, which is the most, I think of the three, personally, I think it's be the most reasonable um, and cost effective. Um, so I don't know if any other board member have any other feelings on um, the three options that were presented. I support number one. Okay. The option is being recommended. Okay. And Director Fardanish, so um, are you in, also in support of option one for uh, uh, chapter six? Yes, uh, I mean, that sounds reasonable. So, I mean, I, I'm just wondering though, for this, um, for this item, I mean, what is the, this going to include? Is it just basically the papers I use in office or what else? Is uh, there? No, I mean, it's everything. It's from Kleenex to toilet paper, paper to checks to sticky paper notes towels. to yeah, paper towels. And I mean, it's quite a lot of different things. Yeah. Maya is. Uh, it's any paper products that can't be purchased uh, using recycled materials. Yeah, so paper cups and I mean, hard so, stock manila folders. Yeah, it just- Envelopes. Envelopes, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a fairly burden, I mean, I shouldn't say it's fairly burdensome. In the past, uh, we, we've, uh, the admin department's ordered most of the paper products, but other folks would have gone out and bought things from time to time without necessarily consideration of whether or not it qualified as a recycled product. So what we've had to do internally to comply kind of in advance of this, knowing that this is coming, this kind of rule is coming is move all the purchasing of anything that's paper, whether it's office related or not to a central point so that we can acquire documentation because not only are we having to make this decision, we have to, do we're documenting it and reporting it to IWMA monthly for all the paper products that we have in order to comply with SB yeah. 1383. It is a new burden, improve. a new yeah. administrative burden. And even though this may not cost us any more in the products that we buy, it will cost us some time. And labor. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I was wondering in terms of um, reporting and things like that. I was wondering how th this is all gonna work out. So it seems like you guys already started that process. So, okay. Yes. Yeah. No. I, you know, I, we've, as we've discussed, there are gonna be times um, when we're not going to be able to follow our internal process. For example, we're not going to run out of toilet paper on a Saturday because Maya is not available to order the, to obtain recycled. recycled toilet paper. Even though it might be available, we're going to go to the store and buy toilet paper and put it in the bathroom. Well, I think that's why option one seems to be the most cost effective and efficient. So um, members of the public, do you have any comments that you would like to offer at this time? regarding um, chapter six on the procurement of recycled uh, paper products. And if so, unmute your phone and introduce yourself for the record. Okay, hearing and seeing none, um, we'll move on then. So chapter seven just goes over how the district um, uh, does checks, and our 7.2 is our check signing procedure. That's everything there is what we already do. Um, yeah, we, we amended the sample policy to match our current practice. Right. Um, and then we also added um, this payment via district credit cards. So currently right now, um, admin keeps a, you know, a number of credit cards. And if a department manager needs something, they'll come and they'll check it out. That's been getting a little bit difficult, especially with like the utility crew because they have to come to the office and then go back out. So we've kind of come up with this policy so that each department head can have, you know, a um, department credit card that they'll be responsible for um, and make purchases. And, um, you know, like this says that they would be limited to $1,500 per single transaction. Um, I'm supportive of that. That just is an efficiency that we need to take advantage of. It 
doesn't make sense to come to the office and pick up a single credit card. So yeah. our, our, our managers are trustworthy. Well, and this is not an uncommon practice no. in, in no. organizations. So, and then just the last item is just payment by electronic funds transfer. Um, we, re we use this on a rare occasion, but it's more for like um, paying, you know, payroll taxes or payroll or PERS health insurance, that type of thing. And so that's any, the end of the policy. Any additional questions, comments from the board? Our Director Fridanish, do you have any uh, additional questions, comments that you would like to share at this time? No, I'm okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, members of the public, uh, do you have any additional comments or questions uh, regarding the policy? And if so, unmute uh, yourself and introduce yourself. Okay, hearing and seeing none, then we'll bring it back to the board. Um, so the recommendation um, made by staff is that we adopt resolution 03-2022, uh, uh, approving the updated district uh, purchasing policy uh, with option one. Um, so I'd like to make a motion that the board approve that. Um, I'll second that. Okay. okay, before you vote, I just want to make sure that we've captured that there were a, a, a small number of changes that you wanted reflected yes. in the update. I just want to make sure that uh, you know, we've captured those so that the, and I assume the motion includes the, the, the discussion and consensus reached of changing uh, section 1.1A2, that's that uh, provides the best value uh, uh, statement, um, uh, changes made. Um, on page six. On, on page six to the table to identify written quotations and also regarding 2.4 C uh, in terms of getting this item back to the board at the next available uh, board meeting as soon as possible the next of it and not later than the next available board meeting yes. within 30 days. I guess we can, we can come up with a way to capture all of that um, on page um, seven. Seven. I've noted um, the striking of four board approval on the second box under item B, mm -hmm. and then um, creating some footnotes to deal with uh, the, the table on item C that these figures might change based on state law. And the, the figures that are here represent the current uh, authorization. Um, page eight. There's a uh, just a missing um, dollar sign. Uh, page eight, I'm sorry, that was for item A1, a dollar sign to be added. Uh, A3, to change that to, to three vendors instead of two under the written quotations. And then also under two, I think it needed to be three vendors, uh, three written in. Yes, that, that, written I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, the one we updated, updated to you uh, shows, and it didn't make that change already, I'm sorry. Um, then I also have, and I'm sorry for taking so long That's here, okay. on uh, page 13, Item 4.5, um, uh, yes, that there, there'd be um, the Delete. board of directors, yeah, we'd we, we would uh, uh, just strike the, approve the request for proposals, and it would say uh, the board shall approve, award the contract of professional services over $50,000, which is reflected in the updated version. Um, I'm sorry, page 14. Item 5.2 ABC, same footnote as applies to the table. Um, I think that was it. Uh, uh, I would uh, recommend we, we revise the motion to reflect that it, it includes the changes noted by the general manager. One, one second, if you don't mind. Uh, I'm, I'm general manager, I'm sorry, I may have missed it. Did you mention anything about the table on page six? Um, yeah, I, I noted that the table on page six um, would, under the second uh, the second tier or the second, uh, the five thousand to ten thousand dollars, five thousand one to ten thousand dollars, the word written would be uh, verbal. Okay, all right. Uh, verbal or written, but minimum but of it's verbal. verbal. And then yeah. strike the RFP in the fourth. Yeah. 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 So the um, the new motion will be that the board approve or adopt resolution 03-2022, 02, 
me try that again, that the board adopt resolution 03-2022, approving the updated district purchasing policy with the changes noted by the general manager in addition to uh, option one as presented by staff. Okay, so that motion is made by Director Logan, seconded by Director English. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Characters Logan? Aye. English? Yes. Sardonish? Aye. Jardini? Director Jardini is absent. And Director Peterson? Yes. Okay, that motion passes 4 0 with one absent. Um, with that, um, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Natalie, for. Um, putting together this policy. I know it was a probably a painstaking process, but uh, at least it's now been done. So uh, thank you for that. Um, with that, we'll now move to our general manager's report. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I do have a, a number of items to, uh, to review uh, with you. Uh, first, um, we did issue a, uh, a press release today noting upcoming uh, refuse rate adjustment that deals with the CPI from 2021. Uh, it also notes that we expect further adjustments uh, or, or actually really uh, letting customers or businesses or residents know that further adjustments are likely based on SB 1383 implementation, IWMA costs, and um, uh, Chicago Great Landfill tipping fees. Uh, so just to give you an advance notice that the KSB Wise plan to do a story on that and, and we'll uh, be meeting with them on Thursday. Um, very much related, we're also happen to be meeting with the Mid-State Solid Waste on Thursday regarding those second set of uh, rates and expect to be presented with the rate calculations at that time. Have not seen anything just yet. Uh, we'll keep, the, keep you up to speed and uh, once we have that in good order, um, Based on the board's uh, discussion at your last meeting, we'll be looking to schedule a Parks, Recreation, and Refuse Committee meeting to review those costs prior to moving forward with publishing a, a Prop 218 notice. Um, uh, we are going to be uh, doing our cloud migration uh, long awaited. This is something we've tried a couple of times back in the fall. And I think we've got a, all, all the kind of kinks worked out. That's scheduled for next Wednesday evening. Uh, and Thursday morning. There will be some disruptions to district uh, services uh, 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 Wednesday night uh, and until new emails, uh, new email server connections are made, likely Thursday morning for most people, um, the e emails will not be delivered. We won't make it to the device. So if you have something urgent, and I know, I know you probably wouldn't email me, but if you, if you have something urgent to uh, Call or text me. That that should not. That, that should work fine uh, next Wednesday evening. Um, there will also be some. There's also some potential disruptions to uh, customers trying to access information in their account, either through the online portal or yeah, until about ten a.m. Yeah, the, early that morning. We expect, expect that to be over by Thursday morning, but it could be that some customers will, will not. We will not be able to access their account history or a uh, process of payment, post a payment until that's all up and running a couple hours into the day Thursday. Um, let's see here. Regarding, um, oh, I, I'm, I plan to attend the SDRMA, that's our Risk Management Authority's Spring Education Day next Tuesday, March 22nd. We get um, some credit uh, uh, that will save us money in our workers' comp and liability insurance uh, by attending. So it's, uh, it makes it worthwhile financially. Um, uh, the district, tonight's board meeting uh, with a board member of Fardonish participating remotely was done in compliance with AB 361, the resolution that the board adopted most recently on February 18th is valid through March 20th. If, um, uh, until such time as, this, as the governor uh, rescinds or, or the executive order based on the declaring the emergency expires, the district could, can still, could continue to approve or consider AB 361 resolutions that would allow uh, participation. And when I say participation, participation by board members, that's really what the Brown Act uh, governs, not participation by the public or by staff even, but participation by 
board members uh, remotely without the traditional Brown Act compliance requirements. So if you, if the board would like to continue to permit remote participation um, without strict Brown Act compliance in the old fashioned way, then uh, I would recommend uh, the board consider an, an AB 361 resolution at your next meeting so that you'll have a 30 day life for that. If you don't, then board member Fardanish, like he is tonight, wouldn't have been able to participate by home from home unless we posted that as a location of the board meeting. And there's a bunch of other requirements that, that probably don't work, um, don't work well. That would need to be a publicly accessible location. The public would have to be allowed in, et cetera. So I think that's something the board needs to consider. Are you, are you, it, it has nothing to do with allowing the public to participate remotely or staff to participate remotely or broadcasting this on Zoom. It's simply about allowing board members to participate either here or uh, from, from somewhere, somewhere else. And if a board member, if we don't approve the resolution, just to be clear, if we don't approve the resolution, then um, in that situation, then Director Ferdonish or any one of us that participates remotely would have to give uh, notice of the location in which we're participating from. Is that correct? Yeah, your location, that location would have to be listed on the agenda as an alternate uh, teleconference location. The location would have to be posted 72 hours in advance. So like, let's say you're doing it from home, you'd have to post this on your front door. And then uh, probably most um, concerning, you, the, your, your home would have to become a public place. It'd have to be accessible and you'd have to allow whomever wanted to attend the meeting from that location to attend. Uh, now there are, uh, um, so yeah, that's the sort of, old way of adhering to so the that, Brown Act yeah. uh, in allowing the remote teleconference purposes. And, and if we should approve um, the resolution to allow the remote to continue to the re remote meetings, it would also be rescinded if the governor should rescind the emergency act that allows for remote participation. So let's say that that we approve it, we have it for 30 days, but I'm 10 days in, the governor rescinds his order, then we're now back to remote. Uh, I, I believe that's person. correct. I, I'm not 100% um, sure. I, I'd have to review that, that, that particular circumstance. You can only approve it 30 days at a time. At a time. I don't know what happens if the, if the uh, declaration be, of, uh, of emergency ends somewhere in yeah. the middle of that 30 days, but we would deal with that, that circumstance if, in fact, you want to continue to permit the remote participation. Uh, um, and again, your the board's resolution applies to the board plus any committees. For example, we have a committee meeting scheduled tomorrow. We noticed it for this room, but both committee members have indicated they're going to participate remotely. So that's allowable because the the, the uh, resolution still is, has life. It was it's good through the twentieth of March. Uh, but if you want to continue to allow that in April, we would need to to agendize, and the board would need to ultimately pass. Uh, the resolution, but it's really up to you. at this point. I would say it's up to you uh, if you uh, if you would if you if the majority of the board wants all the board members back and and not having a remote participation, then that wouldn't either either would be it wouldn't be on the agenda or it would be not approved on the agenda. Either way, it would have the same effect. Okay. And in terms of uh, creating that uh, resolution, would you have to go back to legal and have legal? No. So it's just a matter of using what we've already yes. have the template. I have to make some minor updates to the, to the, okay, to what to we've the done template. before and, and, okay. and we can put that on your next meeting board meeting agenda okay. if, the, if the board would like to. Okay. Uh, question? Comment? Uh, no, my comment would basically be, it would be my preference to have the board members here, but I also would like to be uh, respectful and sympathetic to any of the board members that feel that they need to do this remotely. So, um, I'd be willing to go along if we have any of the board members that really be, believe that they need to, to do this remotely to say that we'll continue the way we're doing it. Although it would be my preference to have all five board members on the board. I intend to be here. I'm not opposed to those who don't want to be here. I'm in support of moving forward with that uh, resolution and give people the option. Yeah. And, and I'm also kind of in favor of having some flexibility um, and, and knowing that the only thing that allows us to have that resolution um, is the governor's um, 
executive order for emergencies. Um, and if he should rescind that, then it does, you know, it's outside of our control. But in the interim, I'm willing and I'm in support of having the resolution. So, uh, Director Fardonish, um, do you have any thoughts on the matter? Uh, I'm uh, either way. I'm okay with just keeping an uh, option open for board members if they want to do remotely or in person. So, uh, I think it, it works out fine. So, okay. except the president has to be. Okay, so I think we've got um, a consensus to move forward with resolution. Okay. We'll include a three hundred and sixty-one resolution on your on your uh, next board meeting agenda. Yes. Um, and now, um, and okay. And, and despite that, we'll continue to allow, uh, well, we'll continue to have Zoom available. Even if all board members do come back to the boardroom, Zoom is going to be um, an option for public uh, to participate um, in these meetings. So that's still going to take place going forward. So, yep. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Um, just one, I will be on vacation. Uh, March 23rd through April 4th. That's about uh, uh, eight or nine business days. So just let, I'm just letting you know, I'll, I'll send you more information out in advance and I, and I will be available. I mean, I, will, I won't be out of, um, uh, out of pocket. I won't be uh, on Mount Everest or something crazy. I'll have cell service and, and that kind of thing. So uh, those are all the items that I have. Okay. Um, any questions uh, for the general manager? Okay, um, any questions from members of the public uh, for general manager? Okay, hearing and seeing none. Um, we do have a few committee reports in the packet. Um, there is uh, the uh, Water Resource Advisory Committee uh, that's in the packet. I also sent to the general manager uh, an email regarding uh, the um, Water Resource Advisory Committee and what's being presented to the Board of Supervisors. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at the presentation that's going to be uh, given to the Board of Supervisors it was regarding today. the drought. It was given today. Oh, okay, good. Um, and then there's also, I think, a GP, uh, GSA um, executive summary um, that was provided by Director Fardanish. Yes. Um, so may I make a couple of comments about the GSA meeting that we had? Sure. Uh, so as you could see, this is the annual report. So we just submitted our uh, uh, report, the main report just um, in January. So uh, by law, we were supposed to do our annual report for, uh, for this year. So you could see the annual report covers uh, from 2017 uh, through 2021. That's because those were the years that uh, we didn't uh, include those years in our original report. So we wanted to uh, have those on there on our annual report. Going forward, we're only gonna have one year at a time. So uh, that, that's gonna make things a little bit simpler. And uh, as a summary, you could see uh, we, we were doing, we, we did well over the last uh, few years. So everything is good. Um, so uh, this is going to get submitted to the state. Uh, any, I don't know if you guys have any questions on the report. I, I think the staff has done a fantastic job throughout this. Uh, they were, everyone's worked well together and uh, we're excited to, you know, moving and get going through the uh, different phases. Um, if no questions, there was an issue that came up at the GSA that I wanted to discuss that with the board. The general manager may have an update on this. It was a kind of surprising item that came up. And, um, and uh, so basically what's happened at Tascadero is making a substantial changes, improvements to their wastewater uh, plant. So they are going to do quite a bit of improvements, capital improvements that they're going to uh, do to their wastewater. Uh, and I guess uh, going through the different phases of this, uh, somehow the state has uh, mentioned to them that their salt content in their water, uh, their wastewater is very high and is no longer under, uh, acceptable for them. So they have to try to reduce it. Uh, they have a couple of options they're looking at it, 
But one of the options that they're looking at uh, is that they have noticed that Templeton's uh, saltwater level uh, is um, by state law, I guess it's higher than them. So one of their options they're thinking is that to send that water to Templeton. <laughs> And this was very surprising to us. Uh, I think both general manager and I, we were shocked. Um, uh, and I obviously brought up uh, our concern about that we had issues with salt uh, in our water. So in our wastewater, and that's not something that, you know, uh, we worked very hard to get it uh, uh, remediated and fixed. So we don't want to have issues again. So. I don't know if general manager has any update. I know you were maybe thinking of getting some information, well, on it, but at least this is something that had came up, and I just want to make sure that the board knows about. Yeah, I can add. Uh, I can add to that, and I'm sorry. I, I should have uh, got back to you, uh, uh, Director Fordanish. Um, I did. I did speak with the uh, Itasca Nurse City Manager on Friday and ex explained the concern that uh, had come up, um, and just to. Add some context, you know, a Tascadero, like many uh, communities around us, their, uh, their, their permit, waste discharge permit is under review and the state is applying new standards and new standards are, are almost always uh, hard, harder to achieve, right? They don't, they're not becoming easier over time. And the Tascadero is, is evaluating its options and, and I, uh, Somehow or another, the concept of, of, of moving their effluent from their current location and, and, the, and the, count, the council member from Atascadero did say Templeton, but I think they really were talking about maybe the Paso Basin because the, the, um, the, the TDS numbers, like their, their limit's like a thousand, it's quite a bit higher and, and they're trying to apply a limit of 500 in Atascadero, which is gonna be very, very difficult to, to meet. Um, uh, maybe, you know, very expensive to meet if, if they have to do so through the use of technology. Um, I was assured in, in that conversation with the Tascadero City Manager that that was an off-the-cuff remark, uh, that, that it's not something that's seriously under consideration. And if it is going to be under consideration, they would consult with us uh, because we do have a number of challenges and that, that, that's something that would definitely be impactful in a number of ways, both where the water is used within the basin. Tascadero uses a lot more water than Templeton does. So um, moving their effluent north actually has some impacts to the water supply within the basin. And then additionally, some of the challenges that we face and, um, and with, with uh, disposing of our water. So I was assured by the Tascadero City Manager that uh, they would consult with us if that, if that concept gains any traction at all. So, and, and I'm sorry, I, I talked to her on Friday and I just blanked and didn't circle back with you. Okay. Um, David, I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, no, that, at least that's good to know because it was like, oh, what? No, there's no way that's, you know, that could be uh, work out well. Of course, at least I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for that update. Um, are there any other updates from any other uh, director at this time? Uh, <clears throat> I did have a comment on the water resources. The, yes. the rec. I, I did listen to the Board of Supervisors meeting today. Yeah. There was a a component of that presentation that went before them that I was interested in, but the uh, drought is real uh, and uh, we're gonna have some serious challenges here in our county. Uh, Lake Lopez will go to, projected to go to historic lows. Nacimiento is starting out at a very low point. Uh, so uh, our, some of our reservoirs will be uh, at some of the lowest uh, levels in decades or if ever yeah uh, this coming fall so uh, we have a, the messaging on conservation is something we'll probably need to focus on more and should so uh, you know that that's something that is kind of real for us uh, so you know I, I just want to comment on that yeah no no it it, it, was, it was staggering to look at um, what was being presented so I encourage uh, everyone to take a look at that um, and for those of you, who are on the phone, um, who uh, did not receive that email. Um, if you go to the um, San Luis Obispo County Water Resource Advisory Committee, um, there is a link um, that will provide you with uh, what was presented to the Board of Supervisors or even just going to the Board of Supervisors meeting that took place today. 
Um, and I would encourage you to do so because it is, um, it, it's scary to think about the shortage of water and the impact of the drought. Um, so um, it's, it's gonna be a challenge. Um, okay, with that, uh, any other comments on committee reports? Um, any comments from members of the public on the committee reports that have been uh, presented and discussed? Okay, hearing none, um, we'll move to um, the activity update staff reports. There's an engineering report in the packet um, from uh, Tina Mayer. Uh, there's a finance uh, report as well. Uh, and there's also a fire and emergency services um, report as well. Um, any questions or comments from board members on those three staff reports? Okay, uh, any members of the public, do you have questions or comments um, regarding the staff reports that I had just uh, mentioned? And if so, unmute your phone and introduce yourself. Hearing and seeing none, uh, we'll bring it back. Um, any director's reports and or comments? Um, I do wanna say that Director Giardini uh, has informed the general manager and myself that she will return um, to uh, our board, men, uh, okay. board meetings on April 19th. So um, our thoughts and prayers are still with her and her family at this time, um, but um, she will return um, on April 19th. So just uh, FYI there. Uh, any other comments or uh, reports that uh, the directors would like to share at this time? Director English. Two comments. One is want to congratulate staff on this getting us back into this boardroom. I'm actually impressed we don't have a microphone in front of us and yet the sound is really good. Staff did a really good job with this project. It looks great in the room. The, I, I like the, uh, the it's much easier to see the screen here. The projector's great. We used to have to turn off. I'm surprised that we don't have to turn off all the lights. Yeah. If I remember when we had uh, the LCD projector, we had to turn off the lights just to see the screen. So this is great. Congratulations and yeah. thank, thank you. I did want to comment on the, I, I did see the press release about the uh, increase in our, our, our rates for uh, solid waste. And that's unfortunate. It's going to be significant. And I, I would hope that our messaging with the, with the media is really three things. One is that we're just responding to state mandates that are in 1383 and that uh, we are, second is that we're only doing the minimum that is required by the state. And, and then third is we're working with our franchisees to keep those the cost, the impacts on the cost as low as possible on our, our customers. So, you know, I, I think, uh, and those are all true. And, and I think for me, that would be the messaging that our board would want to have to our customers that, hey, we're, we really are not happy about this ourselves, And no. in fact, we're, we're doing our best to, to minimize it, so. Yeah, I, I think um, all of us um, are a little concerned about how um, it's gonna be received by a number of folks. Um, and I think it's a significant increase. And with everything else in our lives increasing uh, faster than any of us can keep up with, uh, this is just one more punch. Um, and so um, I'm a little concerned. There's probably a number of people on fixed incomes who are going to have, uh, it's, it's going to hurt. Um, and I, I agree that I think there are so many um, increases for different reasons that it does need to be very clearly communicated as to why each increase is occurring because it's the CPI, it's the tipping fees, it's uh, SB 1383, it's the IWMA. And I would also make sure that we don't use that acronym without defining it. Uh, and maybe even describing what is the IWMA. Um, because most people don't understand who and what it is. Um, so, and I agree that we have to really um, Kind of not uh, kind of educate people as to why these increases are taking place unfortunately because that senate bill um, does create uh, a number of operational challenges 
and there's a cost to implementing that in order to be compliant uh, with that law. So um, communication is going to be huge uh, because it is going to be a big hit to people's pocketbooks. Um, so, and, and I do want to also um, commend you, um, Director, our, our General Manager Brills, for sending out that communication because I think having at least, we knew the CPI adjustment and at least we got that out. Um, so we're not hitting people with just one big punch, if you will. So um, I'm glad you brought that up. Those are my comments, so. Uh, any other comments uh, at this time? No. Uh, any comments from members of the public before we adjourn? Okay, and just, um, I think we've got a couple of items um, on our agenda for April 5th, and that is the budget amendment for the engine, um, 7195 seat replacements, and then we also have the notice of completion and the budget amendment for the boardroom technology upgrades, which I agree, it is so nice to have um, this technology now in place. So, uh, and certainly this is going to help when we have consultants, instead of having to pay for the travel to come here to Templeton, we can just have them zoom in on the meetings. Um, so that's going to be a huge savings there. Um, with that, um, that concludes our meeting and uh, we can adjourn at uh, 736. Thank you everyone and thank you for the members of the public for your participation. Try 836. 836. Have a good evening. Good night, all. Good night. Good.